welcome to the second part of lecture 18 on graph theory. Uh, in the first part of this lecture, um, we talked about two lower bounds for uh, chromatic number of a graph. Uh, that chromatic number of a graph is always greater than equal to the peak size of the graph. And uh, the other one is that the chromatic number of the graph is greater than or equal to the cardinality of B by maximum independent set size. Okay, so, uh, the second bound uh, that we got uh, is uh, the proposition uh, 2 probably uh, <coughs> that chi g is uh, greater than equal to v g by alpha g. Now, uh, one remark, sometime uh, this bounds uh, works fine, but uh, they could be very loose also um, sometime. So, this bound could be very loose and we give an example to uh, sort of <coughs> support this remark. Uh, let me consider this graph. Uh, this graph has uh, n components n components. Uh, the first component is k 1 that means just one vertex. The second component is also complete graph with one vertex that means just a single vertex and you have such uh, components uh, n minus 1 such components right and uh, then the nth component is uh, complete graph with k vertices. Okay. So, so, this is the graph G, it has n components, this is the graph G. Okay. Now, what is the size of maximum independent set or what is alpha G here? Alpha G is uh, clearly n because you can pick uh, in the independent set uh, this n minus 1 vertices from n minus 1 components and 1 vertex from k k. So, that will give you uh, independent size, uh, uh, maximum independent set of size n. And uh, what is the number of vertices here? V g is uh, equal to here you have k vertices and uh, in this n minus 1 components you have n minus 1 vertices. So, n minus 1 plus k. Now, what is the chromatic number of this graph g? Uh, the chromatic number of this graph is um, like we have used that, uh, you can use that result that uh, chromatic number of a graph G is maximum of uh, chromatic number of different components. Okay. So, C is a component. Okay. So, this component required one color, this component required one color, this component required one color, but this component required k colors. So, uh, the chromatic number of this graph is maximum of 1, 1, 1 and k which is equal to k. Right? So, 
uh, as you can see that the chromatic number is k and uh, our this bound gives that chi g is greater than equal to b g by alpha g which is n minus 1 plus k by n and this will be less than 2 for large n right that is easy to see but actual chromatic number is k so the lower bound says that uh, the chromatic number is something less than 2 but actual chromatic number is k so that's mean uh, for this graph uh, the bound given by this proposition 2 is very loose okay so uh, we talked about two lower bounds uh, for chromatic number uh, now we move to upper bound for chromatic number and we uh, give a greedy algorithm to color the vertices of a graph. Okay. So, chromatic number and its relation with maximum degree. and also this talk about the upper bound for chromatic number. So, I will start with uh, an algorithmic technique uh, to color the vertices of a graph. The colors are 1, 2, 3 like this we are not really going to use different colors we will use numbers uh, instead of colors okay now what is this greedy coloring algorithm the greedy coloring relative to to a vertex ordering v1 v2 so this coloring algorithm depends on uh, how you ordered the vertices um, of the graph g and the greedy coloring relative, relative to a vertex ordering is obtained by coloring the vertices in the order v1, v2, vn. So, you choose uh, an arbitrary ordering of the vertices. This algorithm does not say how you order the vertices. So, you have to just decide on an arbitrary ordering of the vertices and then you color the vertices in this order. You color the vertex v1 first and then v2 first uh, with this specific uh, rule you assign to v y in the ith step assign to v i the smallest indexed colored not already 
used for its neighbor. Among, I'll explain this one among V1, V2, V I minus one. And in a vertex ordering, whatever ordering you take, it does not matter. Uh, each vertex has at most delta g neighbor on the left or earlier neighbors so the greedy algorithm cannot force to use more than delta g plus 1 colors. Okay, so, this is what the uh, algorithm is, but uh, I need to explain it. Uh, so, what you do is that given a graph, uh, you just uh, decide on an arbitrary ordering of the vertices and then you color the vertices in this order only. So, that means you color V1 first and then V2 first. So, when you are assigning a color to V2 for example, you use the smallest index color not already used for its neighbor on the left hand side. That means, you use the smallest index color for V2 which is not used for V1 provided V1 is neighbor of P2. Okay, and the number of colors required to greedily color uh, the graph, it depends on what ordering you have taken. If you change the ordering of the vertices, the number of colors required to color the graph might differ. So, I will give an example that how, um, how the number of colors required by the greedy algorithm changes when you change the uh, order of the graph, uh, order of the vertices. So, let me uh, give this example. So, I consider a bipartite graph say this one, uh, you have four vertices in the left side and uh, four vertices on the right side and uh, I call them or label them x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8. So, x1 is adjacent to x7, x6, x5. Uh, x2 is adjacent to x8, x6 and x5. Uh, x3 is adjacent to x5, x7 and x8 and x4 is adjacent to x6, x7 and x8. Now, 
the algorithm does not know that whether that this is a bipartite graph or some other graph. Uh, so, it will decide on some arbitrary ordering. Uh, if I choose this ordering for example, uh, this x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7 and x8. Suppose this is the ordering I decide on and then I will start coloring with x1 and uh, I will color this vertex x1 1. So, I give color 1 to x1. Now, when I color x2, I will use the smallest index color not already used for its neighbor among the previous on its, na its neighbor on the left hand side. So, x2's neighbor on the left hand side, uh, there is no neighbor on the left hand side. So, uh, I can use the smallest index color that is available. So, I can use 1 again. For x3, it does not have, so x1 and x2 are not neighbor of x3. So, I can't I can use the same color 1. x4, x1, x2, x3 are not neighbor of x4. So, I look at the neighbor of a vertex x i on its left hand side only. I do not look at the right hand side at this moment. So, I can give color 1. Now, for x 5, I look at its neighbor on the left hand side. So, x 5 has neighbor x 3, x 2, x 1, x 3, x 2 and x 1. So, but all of them are colored 1. So, the color among the colors 1, 2, 3, 4, I can use the smallest index color for x 5 that is 2, right. For x 6, again I look at its neighbor on the left hand side uh, and the neighbor of x 4 are sorry, now neighbor of x 6 are x 4, x 2 and x 1, all of them are colored 1. So, I can use color 2 for x 6. Similarly, for x 7, you can check that uh, all its neighbor on the left hand side are colored 1. So, I can use color 2 for x 7 and similarly, for x 8, I can use color 2 again, right. Now, it is good that uh, you got uh, the greedy algorithm uh, colored uh, this bipartite graph with two colors. As I said that um, if you change the ordering of the vertices, the required number of colors might change. So, if you uh, take this ordering for example, say x 1 x 1 because you can start with any arbitrary ordering and the number of colors required depends on what or ordering you choose. So, x 1 x 8 x 2 x 7 x 3 x 6 x 4 x 5. Now, if you choose this ordering, because the ordering is an arbitrary ordering, you do not know in which order you have to color the vertices. So, if you choose this ordering, then first for x 1, you can use color 1, fine. For x 8, it has no neighbor on the left hand side. So, again you can use the color 1. 
Now, for x 2 has neighbor on the left hand side 8. So, you cannot use color 1 again for x 2 because x 2 is adjacent to x 8. So, you have to use the smallest index color which is has been not used for its neighbor on the left hand side. So, you have to use color 2 for x 2. Now, look at x 7, x 7 has neighbor x 1 and x 1 is colored with 1. So, for x 7 you have to use the smallest index color available that is 2. Okay. Now, go to x 3, x 3 uh, has 3 neighbors x 5, x 7 and x 8. So, the neighbor of x 3 is x 7 and x 8 on the left hand side. So, now you can see that uh, the two neighbors of x 3 they are already colored 1 and 2. So, x 3 cannot, so x 3 has to use the next smallest index color available. So, x 3 will be colored with color 3 and similarly x 6 is uh, on the left hand side it has neighbor x 2 and uh, and x 1, x 2 and x 1, I can remove these two now uh, and they are colored 1 and 2. So, uh, the smallest index color not used for its neighbor on the left hand side uh, that is uh, 1, 2 are already used. So, you have to use color 3 for x 6. Now, look at x 4, x 4 has uh, neighbor x 6, x 7 and x 8, uh, x 8 is one neighbor for x 4 on the left hand side, x 7 is another neighbor for x 4 and x 6 is also a neighbor of x 4 and uh, so the neighbor have already used the color 1, 2 and 3. So, you have to use the next smallest available color that is 4, smallest indexed color that is 4 and similarly for x 5 you can check that you have to use color 4. So, for this ordering you can see that the number of colors uh, used by the greedy algorithm is 4. So, this explains that um, how many colors you need to use by the greedy algorithm that depends on completely on the ordering of the vertices, how do you order the vertices and this algorithm does not talk about how to order the vertices so that the uh, number of colors required will be less. Okay. Um, so, this example explains that if you change the ordering of the vertices, uh, you require different number of colors, right. Okay. So, we talk um, and clearly uh, when you are coloring the ith vertex v i, it can have maximum delta g neighbors on the left hand side on its left because the degree of this vertex is maximum delta g right and it might happen that all the neighbors on its all the delta g neighbors they have different colors. So, for v i you have to assign delta g plus 1 the color delta g plus 1. Okay. So, that is why uh, this proposition is a um, obvious consequence of the greedy algorithm that uh, this gives a upper bound that delta g is always less than or equal to delta g sorry chromatic number of g is always less than or equal to delta g, delta g is the maximum degree of the graph g plus 1.
plus 1. Okay, so, this uh, is also explained in the in the greedy algorithm that uh, in any vertex ordering each vertex v i has at most delta g neighbors on its left. So, the greedy algorithm cannot force to use more than delta g plus 1 colors. So, uh, this clearly says that the chromatic number of the graph g uh, is always less than equal to the maximum degree plus 1. Okay. So, now just for information uh, we talk about uh, some theorems uh, results known in this area. Theorem Brooks theorem 1941. Uh, it says that if G contains a vertex V of degree d v strictly less than delta g. That means, it is not a delta g regular graph. Uh, there is at least one vertex which has degree less than the highest degree. Then you can improve this upper bound slightly that delta g sorry the chromatic number of the graph g is less than equal to uh, delta g. So, in this case uh, when there is a vertex of degree strictly less than delta g, um, you can uh, this theorem gives an ordering of the vertices um, which requires uh, depth first search um, which is a technique in algorithm you start with one vertex and systematically you visit all the vertices which are accessible from the vertex v. Um, so, since we do not know depth first search algorithm we will not talk about the proof of this algorithm, but the outline of this uh, uh, outline of the proof of this theorem that you start with vertex v which has degree strictly less than delta g and apply DFS and so the DFS will give you uh, ordering of the vertices and you color the vertices of the graph in a reverse order of the DFS. Okay, so, this is just for information that you can improve uh, your result slightly instead of delta g plus 1 it can be delta g only. Now, one question uh, which connected graphs do not satisfy this condition. This is just a remark of observation that uh, chi of g is less than equal to delta g. Uh, you look at this complete graph with n vertices. Uh, we know that uh, chi of k n is equal to 1 sorry uh, is equal to n and delta of k n is equal to n minus 1. Okay. So, here uh, this connected graph uh, k n the complete graph with n vertices does not satisfy this condition. Okay. The another graph is uh, cycle with odd number of vertices c 2 n plus 1 and we know that 
watt cycle has chromatic number 3 and uh, the maximum degree of cycle C 2 n plus 1 is equal to 2. So, chi of C n plus 1 is delta plus 1 basically right. So, here is the um, other theorem um, again by Brooks 1941 that uh, if G is not k n is not a complete graph or not a odd cycle C 2 n plus 1 for some n except these two graphs for the other graphs chi of G of course, I am talking about connected simple graphs chi of g is less than equal to delta g. Okay. Uh, so, that is all. Um, so, we have learned what is a chromatic number of a graph and we talked about uh, um, its lower bound uh, using the click number, maximum click size and uh, maximum independent size size of maximum independent set and also we talked about uh, uh, upper bound uh, based on the maximum degree of the graph G. Uh, that is all for today. Thank you very much.